I tell you, fellas, all the big nature show hosts wear pith helmets. They make you look, um, like adventurers. I feel ridiculous. You look ridiculous. Now, the next big thing I think you should do is get rid of that cooking cockroach. Hey, you do have some good ideas. Thank you. Here's Eve. Bonjour, my petit animal friends. Today, I, Yves Saint Laurent, I'm going Eve, to be sure. my friend, oh. I just wanted to tell you how much I enjoy your part of the show. Oh, thank you. Except for the silly accent. What? Glad I could help. But don't thank me. Oh, oh, don't worry, I'm not going to thank you. Huh? As I was saying, today, I was going to show you how to feed the mongoose. But I do not like this mongoose. So, I am not going to feed him this delicious basket of snakes. Instead, I am going to play a song my dear maman used to sing to me. <laughs> Would you believe it? It is a snack! <laughs> oh, where is that person? Oh, get, oh, 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 get off me! Oh, oh, oh! Thanks, Eve. Now, Ernie, it's been great having you on the show, but it's time to bring out our next guest. So oh, say no go. more, Jake. I know exactly what you want. So no, you don't. You you go for Ernie. Ernie. A little rest. Ernie. Ernie. Great guys, Ernie. Ernie. Go. Ernie. Just, Just wait over the there. there. Wait over there, and I'll take care of this interview. <laughs> Hello there, friends. And now it's time for an interview, Ernie Star. I can't believe he took over the show. I can't believe we're still wearing these silly hats. And now it's my pleasure to bring out someone I've known for years, even though we've never actually met. Here he is, all the way from Africa. Africa. Thank you. My close personal friend, Kyle the Secretary Bird. Hold everything. Who's this guy? I thought I was supposed to talk to a polar bear and a skunk. Oh, Kyle, it's good to see you again for the first time. Where are Stinky and Jake? Oh, they're right over there. Uh, Hi. Boy, those are silly hats. And speaking of silly hats, let's take a look at some secretary birds. Silly hat? These are my feathers. No, in a minute, in a minute. First, I want to know why those two birds are standing on top of a tree. That's when we secretary birds build our nests, at the top of thorny trees. All right, now what's with your silly hat? It is not the hat. Those feathers on top of our head are called our crest. How big are you guys? I mean, you're not exactly sparrow size, are you? No, we're not. An adult male secretary bird stands about four feet high and has a wingspan of seven feet. Well, with all that wing, why are those two birds walking? Wouldn't it be faster to fly? No, secretary birds hardly ever fly. We prefer to walk, sometimes as much as 20 miles a day. It's also how we find our food. Ooh, food, my favorite subject. Ah, well, this secretary bird has spotted a locust hiding in the grass. You eat bugs? Of course. And once we see the locust, we use our feet to stomp on them. Crushed locust? Is that any good? Well, it's very nutritious, but it's not very filling. You must have to eat a lot of locusts to fill a bird as big as you. Well, we also eat beetles, lizards, turtles, and other small animals. Now, I understand you and I have something in common. We both love to eat snake. Oh, yeah, I love snake. We secretary birds are great snake hunters. Same here. So what do you do? Do you wrestle with them or what? Same as we do with locusts. We stomp them. Come on, you're pulling my tail. You just watch. Our feet are perfect for the job. And a secretary bird can hit its prey with a force that's powerful enough to break a human being's arm. He'll keep stomping until there's no sign of life. That bird won't eat or move the snake until he's sure there's no chance of getting bitten. That's a very, very good idea, and that snake looks so tasty. Hmm. And now I'd like to show you some pictures of my family. Oh, family pictures. Animals love that stuff. Let's see them. All right. That's my little Kyle. He's a scrappy young fella. Oh, he's cute. Well, for a bird, I mean. And that's one of our nests. You have more than one nest? Oh, yeah. Secretary birds have as many as six nests spread over ten square miles. Nice! That means no matter where you go, you're close to home. What a good idea! Now, what's that you're about to feed little Kyle? What else? Snake strips. But it's tough for a little fella to eat pieces that are big. So we usually have to chew it up and then spit it out for him to eat it. Mm. 
Oh, hold the phone. What's this all about? Oh, well, Secretary Boyd's a very territorial. Look, I don't care who you voted for. No, I just no, meant... no, you don't understand. Territorial means we don't want other animals coming near our nests. So we do this. What, you dance with them? When we spread our wings like that, it makes us look bigger. That's called a threat display. It's usually enough to scare off most trouble. Hey, and when all else fails, you can always stomp on them, right? <laughs> or, if we really have to, we can fly off into the clouds. Well, Kyle, it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, I've always wanted to meet a mongoose, the second best snake hunters in the world. Oh, that's very kind of you. No, wait a minute, what do you mean, second best? We're number one. No, sir, it's the secretary, Bite. It's, it's the mongoose. The Bite. It's the mongoose. It's the secretary, It's the mongoose. Hey, hey, it's the freaking mongoose, I'm telling you. Now, Kyle, we want you to sing a song. Gladly. And Ernie, mm -hmm. we need to talk. Oh, but Jake, come on. Right after the song. Here's a little something I plucked out. I don't go right in Shakespeare. Take me at my word. To think I take dictation is really quite absurd. I have no education, so give a guy a break. The only thing I like to do is how to kill a snake. That's not true. You should see me take short feather. Ooh. Someone in their wisdom called me Secretary Boyd. Isn't that the dumbest thing a guy has ever heard? I'll never make a home a Plato, Orwell, Boynes, or Blake. The only thing I'll ever write, R.I.P. dear snake. That would be A for rest, I for in, and P for peace. Is there anyone out there? It seems to me this mongoose has had it far too good. This pushy little fella should get it understood. He's not the only one around who catches snakes I've heard. That honor he must share with me, the secretary boy. <laughs> Great song, Kyle. Ernie, now listen, it's great having you on the show, but you can't come in and just take over. That's my job. Oh, Jake, when you're right, you're right. And right now, let's watch Animal Awards. No! <sighs> and now it's time for... Animal Awards. Today we'll find out which bird is the tallest. Oh, hey, that would be my Uncle Stretch Chicken Hut. Oh, I'm strong. What? I mean, which of these birds is the tallest? Oh. Is it the ostrich? Hmm, the emu? Or the secretary bird? And the winner is... The ostrich, which stands up to seven feet high. Wow, making my Uncle Stretch look like a shrimp. The ostrich, winner of today's animal award. Hmm. <laughs> And now it's time. Here you go, Jake. I picked out a great story for you to read. You picked out the story? Mm hmm. It's about a mongoose. Should have known. Mm. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a marsh mongoose named Monique. One day, Monique was looking for something delicious to eat. She looked and looked until finally she found it the perfect shellfish. Smash! Monique tried to get it open. Smash! She tried and tried. But as hard as she tried to smash it, she couldn't get it open. Nor could she bite it open. Oh, open up, you selfish shellfish, she cried. And then with one final smash, it opened. Monique was starving after all that smashing, so she gobbled up the shellfish and lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, wasn't that a beautiful story? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, uh, don't you have to go? Go? I just got here. <laughs> now, guys, I was thinking, whenever you did something funny, you could honk a little horn like this. <laughs> mm. It's habitat time. <laughs> so, uh, where, where are we going today, bunny? Armstrong, <laughs> what's with the horn? Oh, uh, I'm just taking some of Ernie's suggestions to hide. Oh. Uh, Habitat Time needs some punching up, and I'm the bird to punch it up. Uh, <laughs> then punch it through here! Oh. The East F 
African grasslands. Mm. Oh, look, zebra. <laughs> I'm strong. Keep it down. <laughs> disturb them. <laughs> oh, now look what you've done. That wasn't me. It's just the zebras on their annual migration. Oh, look, elephants. <laughs> you see, <laughs> it sounds just like them. <laughs> oh, the African elephant is the largest living land mammal. Hey, uh, what are those two guys doing? Those bulls are fighting for territory. <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Huh? You don't want that black rhino to charge, do you? No, I'd rather he paid with cash. <laughs> oh, the black rhino is a vegetarian, and it's an endangered species still hunted for its horns. It's not funny. Hey, what's that? A water buck. Oh, and that there is an egret. Uh, with a flock of sacred ibis. I know my birds. <laughs> ibis <laughs> wade in the marshes looking for food. Hey, there's a water buck again. Armstrong, will you stop honking <laughs> that horn? You do not want to disturb these Cape buffalo. Yeah, but I wouldn't mind saying to those ostriches. <laughs> ostriches are the largest and strongest of any living bird. And until humans started eating them, were found only in Africa. Here are our old friends, the zebras again. <laughs> oh, that's it. I've had enough. Come on. Armstrong, will you please stop honking that horn? Yeah, okay, I'll stop. I'll Fine. Stop. For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And I'm showing the chicken hook. Just back from the East African grasslands. Thank you. You're welcome. Over to you, Rhonda. Oh, Armstrong! <laughs> uh, <clears throat> well, that's all the time we have, and I'd like to thank our special guests, Kyle, the secretary, Bird, and our permanent guest, Ernie the Mongoose. Look, Ernie, uh, the, the show's almost over. You really have to go. I do? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to. <laughs> uh, what is it, Ernie? Oh, well, it's just that Ernestine and the kids are visiting our mom, so I'm home all alone. That's why I didn't want to leave. Oh, <laughs> oh Ernie! Nobody likes uh, why to go home to an empty bed. Yeah, barrel. you should have said so. <laughs> you can stay with us. Yeah. Again? Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you know what else? What? what? Until next time, remember, keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. That was my line. Yeah, but didn't you like the way I delivered it? You know, with a kind of a smile on my lunch. I thought you were trying to do stuff like that. I'm going to feel like you. Oh, this is so much. Oh,